high above the hustle and bustle of these city streets, four of the world's greatest fibbers are about to challenge your common sense and intuition at the regular meeting of the all-new Liars Club. <laughs> Introducing from Perfect Strangers, Miss Rebecca Arthur. From It's a Living, Mr. Paul Truffle. From We've Got It Made, Miss Terry Coakley. And here's our resident authority on almost nothing at all, Mr. John Barber. And now, to keep this unruly group in order, the president of the new Liars Club, Mr. Eric Fordsman. Welcome to the New Liars Club. Yes, I'm Elvis Presley, and I'm alive and hosting the show. <laughs> no, that's a lie. That's a lie. Look, I'll leave all the lying today to our professional prevaricators over here. How are you doing today? You look more like FDR. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oof, my grandmother would strangle you for that. Anyway, but we haven't met our contestants over here, and you are? Bruce Nelson. And Bruce, what do you do? I sell real estate. Ooh, uh, swampland or uh... yeah, any, any, any kind of swampland? <laughs> any kind of swampland. He's the guy to talk to. Bridge, yeah. Sitting next to you is Marianne. And Marianne, what do you do? Just a housewife. Oh, don't say just a housewife. <laughs> <laughs> She's a housewife. Yeah. A all right. Good one. Woo. All right. Good luck to you today, Jim. Jim you... Norman. And what do you do? I sell computers. Just a computer salesman. Not at all, no. <laughs> <laughs> and finally? I'm Janice Minskip. And you are a? Counting clerk. Accounting clerk? Yep, for a major soft drink company. And you count bottle tops and things like that? No. <laughs> right. Anyway, good luck to all of you today. Now, I know you know how to play the game, and the majority of this crowd knows how to play the game. But let me remind you, if you've forgotten how we play the Liars Club, very simple. Uh, a strange or unusual object is placed in front of this strange and unusual crowd over here. Each one will tell a story, but only one is telling the truth. Your job to figure out who is telling the truth. Now, we'll start everyone with 100 points here. In the first round, the odds are even. It's one to one. And uh, by the way, you can bet up to half your money each time, up to 100 points. All right? And uh, by the way, one more thing. We play four rounds here. If you indeed get to all four rounds correct, what will they win? Hitachi's VCR with digital VU transmitter and automatic functions. Just touch the remote control for an on-screen guide to programming and playback procedures. Furnished by Hitachi and Hitachi's 20-inch color TV with random access remote control. On-screen channel volume picture control. Cabinet designed for beauty and durability. Furnished by Hitachi. Those are the rules and those are the prizes. We're ready to play round one. And our resident liar, John Barber, has got the first object. What the heck is that, sir? Well, it's been a while, Eric, since I've uh, seen these. Uh, this is uh, George Bush's Q-tip. It goes in one ear, not the other. Uh, no, um, Write your letters, care of John. Actually, these are, are two items, and you'll notice they're different uh, sizes, and they just happen to be tied together for our convenience. Uh, these are the most difficult musical instrument to play is the bassoon. A lot of spittle is expelled <laughs> when people sure. blow a bassoon. And you notice these are different sizes because some people have different size bassoons. Uh, like your bassoons might be bigger than <laughs> Rebecca's bassoon. Uh, and what, what these are is these are bassoon swabbers. So after the USC marching band plays or the RCMP marching band plays, there's somebody who has to go in and swab out the bassoon. <laughs> Not baboons. They do their own swabbing. I know that you play the buffoon, <laughs> so I'm willing to buy the story, maybe, but I'm curious what Terry's going to tell us this is. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> this man is always laughing at me. Pass the paddle down. Okay. <laughs> this is, uh, as he said, is, is tied together for our convenience, but this is made by the women who used to do wonderful things for their husbands. <laughs> and, uh, you would quit. <laughs> and, anyway, and what wonderful things would this be doing? Well, they, the, the man uses this to clean out the barrel of his gun. And there are two different sizes, and for, for further down and up close, and you mean different sizes. Wives of gun. don't clean the husband's gun anymore. So, a gun cleaner, a gun cleaner, Paul Kreppel. 
Is it a cleaner? It, no, it is not a cleaner. As a matter of fact, I know it looks a lot like a cleaner, but you can see from the design, the kind of quilty, platy kind of pattern, and the wool. You know what these things are? It's, I, I, I'm sure you all know about the Scottish sword dance. You know, the little thing that the Scottish people do. Well, they teach that dance when they're very young. About three years old is when the first person is using them, <laughs> and you don't give a three-year-old a sword. <laughs> no. These are Scottish sword dance dummies. <laughs> And they're used in place of the sword for a Scottish, Scottish sword. sword dance they're dummies. Luch <laughs> I can't even Luch say that. It's impossible. Luch Rebecca, Rebecca, please. Yeah. Y'all are very this? creative. Have you all ever heard of gravity heat? When you have gravity heat in your home, you use these to clean the vents out with. This way, you don't scrape it up. So the for cleaning house, your furnace vents and things like that. All the yicky stuff coming into your house. All right, all right. Those are the stories. Please place your bets over here, gang, as I remind everybody what our stars have told us. John said, these are bassoon swabs. Terry said, it's a gun cleaner. Paul said, a Scottish sword dummy. <laughs> and Rebecca said, a vent cleaner for gravity heaters. All right, those are the stories. Let's find out how you're betting. Bruce, we're going to start with you. Okay. And you bet? 40. 40 points. Marianne? 20. 20 points. She bets. Jim? 30 for me. 30. And Janice? 20. 20. All right. The bets are in place. I don't know, by the way. Have you figured out what it is? We'll soon find out. This device is a bassoon swab. It cleans the moisture out of the inside of a bassoon. So John was telling the truth. We are looking for a vote on John. You bet 40 points. Will you win 40 points? Bruce, did you bet on John? No, Paul. I'm sorry. Uh, Marianne bet 20 on? Rebecca. Rebecca, you bought that story, huh? Jim, bet 30 on? Rebecca. Good story. Ooh, good fibbing over there. And Janice bet 20 on? I Rebecca. Oh, oh, no. no. I feel terrible. Well, they were all fooled this time by our professional prevaricators, but we'll see what happens when we come back for round two on The Liar's Club. <laughs> We've been cleaning our bassoons while you've been away, and now we're ready to play round two, and things are exactly the same, except the uh, odds are doubled. You can double your points this time, all right? Two to one. And we're ready to start with Rebecca with her object. Uh, what is it? Okay. Now, you, you've got to believe me. This is truly what this is. This is an antique English tie presser. It even says on here, Taylor and Outfitter, A.A. A. Norman, <laughs> Wat Wandsworth Road, or something like that. But what you do is you put your tie in there, not those clippy jobs, the real ties. <laughs> okay, the ties, these, they press them in here, put these little things up, and then they go to bed. I'm telling you. Oh, God, believe me. Please, yeah. okay, wait. Anybody I, who says clippy jobs certainly is telling the truth. Yes, All you know, right. it's not those wimpy clippy jobs. It's yeah. real, real bow ties. For, this is a tie presser. Yes, and you just All stick right. it in like that, go night and night, wake up in the morning, and you have a press. Paul doesn't tie. need it. His ties are always well pressed. I am telling you the truth, oh, truth. Sure. I mean, no millennium Wadsworth Reitzig. This is an Armenian cheese straightener. Armenian string cheese is placed inside of this. It's an antique. They don't use them anymore, of course, unless you make your own cheese. It's an Armenian cheese straightener. But not for clippy Believe cheese. Believe me. No, no, not clippy cheese. String cheese. An Armenian cheese presser. Straightener. Straightener? Yes. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Terry, the is presser it a straightener has or is it a presser? Part. What is it? I'm not going to take this do little apart again, but what it is, is, is this is for butterfly collectors. <laughs> butterfly collectors? That's really gross. Terry. That's gross. <laughs> well, they got to do it somehow, so they use this guy. So they what put the butterfly mean? in there before mounting it? Yes, they, you know, straighten that wow. guy out and keep him stiff and. Ew. All right. Ew. So it's a butterfly butterfly press. Is yeah, that the word? let's see. Did it work? No, I assume it does. Well, I'm going to buy the story. Butterfly see. press. She's looking for blood stains. Yep, it's there. <laughs> All right. John Barber. Oh, listen. I want to talk to Bruce, the guy that sells marshland. <laughs> uh, the Egyptians uh, invented uh, papyrus, which was paper, about five thousand years ago. And until that time, all coinage was silver, actual gold or actual silver. But the Egyptians only used papyrus for writing. It was the Chinese who took it a step further and decided to combine the two. 
And what the Chinese did is they were the first to develop paper money. And the engraving plates were put inside here, and then that's how they engraved the paper money. Okay, for printing years. early paper money. Those are the yeah. stories. You've heard the tall tales. Now, place your bets as I remind you the tales we just heard. Rebecca said it's an antique Thai press. Paul said an Armenian cheese straightener. <laughs> Terry said it's a tool used for butterfly collectors. And John said it's for early uh, printing papyrus money, paper money. All right. One of those people actually was telling the truth. I don't know who it is. Let's find out how you're voting. First of all, I want to know what kind of points you're betting here and how confident you are. Bruce is ready and we're he's set to go, ready. sir. Oh, no, he's rethinking, saying, well, that was okay. a lie, but that okay. was... Okay, here we go. Bruce is betting. 30. 30 points here in round two. Marianne? 30. 30. Jim? 30 points. 30. And Janice? Going for broke. 40. Oh, she says, oh, yeah, you're betting half. All right. Let's find out what it is. Is it a press? Is it a straightener? Is it a papyrus thing? <laughs> it is for straightening and pressing old-fashioned bow ties. Rebecca was telling the truth. I told you I was telling the truth. So we're looking for a vote on Rebecca. Who knew? Bruce bet 30 points. Will he win 60 on John? You bought the uh, paper yeah, money, all right. Money. Marianne bet 30, and she... On John. Oh, I'm so sorry. Jim bet 30 on Rebecca. All Thank right. God. So we had 60 points to your score. And Janice bet 40 on Rebecca. All right. All right, we've got a game going here. So at the end of round two, Rebecca's in first place for 160 points. We're going to find out who's going to win. we got at least two more rounds. Come on back. And now, back to Eric and his four fabulous members. We are ready for round three, and Janice is leading with 160 points, followed right on the heels by Jim with 130. Then we have Marianne with 50. Bruce? Bring up the lead. But don't worry. Don't worry. That's an important position. Hey, the odds now are five to one, so the game's going to turn around. Who knows? What is this, John Barber? I don't even recognize that at all. Well, I want to go after Bruce again. I mean, for a real estate salesman, he's not doing very well over there. And didn't do great with the child. I got something I want to sell you, Bruce, a piece of Wayne Gretzky's contract. Uh, <laughs> Now, uh, in, uh, in about the 17th century, the most successful uh, uh, whalers were Scandinavi Scandinavians. They worked the, both the Arctic and the uh, Antarctic, and they used to have to work with har harpoons with ropes, and it required too many men to work it. And then they discovered uh, wire, and they, this was the first wire harpooner was fastened to the front of the, the whaling schooner, and the wires went here. And the reason for the gears is for every one inch of this that you could turn, you would pull in about three yards of wire. That was the easiest way for one man. They were looking to save manpower in those days, too. And getting rid of people. So sure, that's sure. what it is, a Scandinavian harpooner. A it Scandinavian harpooner. Yeah, actually, the pole goes in here. All in right. There. All right. It's for harpooning Scandinavians, obviously. Uh, Terry, what do you think this is? What does this look like, honestly? This is an old... Movie projector. <laughs> His little eye guy down here. The this eye guy. The eye guy. Yeah. Kind of film. The thing. Movie comes out here. The wheel goes on here. You can see it here. The film gets going through here. They move it like this in the olden days. This is a movie projector from movie the projector. late 1800s. All right. The very first Rambo was seen on that one. Paul. All right. I. I must confess, it almost looks like that, but you know something? I know from the old sweatshop days <laughs> that this is a ribbon crimper, and it also, in the same process, would attach a ribbon, which it crimped, to a piece of material for a hemline along the bottom of ladies' garments around the turn of the century. You can see that it would go through here. So it's they a don't ribbon have the crimper. Needles. It's a ribbin crimper. crimper and sewing machine yeah. uh, attachment. Paul Kreppel says it's a crimper. No, it's Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> Rebecca <laughs> Arthur. Well, you wouldn't want to put a crimper in your mouth. <laughs> Go ahead. This is obviously a pasta maker. You stick the pasta in here. It comes around this way. Looky, right here, see the holes? 
You can have different size pasta. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you just, I mean, it's an ancient one. It is an but ancient one, but it is, is a pasta a maker, pasta you say. Maker. All right, those are the tales. Please place your bets over here. I'll remind everybody what our stars have said. John said it was the first wire Scandinavian harpooner. Terry said it's an old movie projector. Paul said it's a ribbon crimper. Yes. Because you'd hate to have crimpless ribbons. And Rebecca said it's a pasta maker. All right, I'm playing along. I don't know who. Bruce, let's see how many points you bet this time. A whole ten points. Ten. Oh, you reckless. He's a crazy fool, isn't he? Marianne bet 20, almost as reckless. Jim said, I'll go the full 30. And Janice says 60. All right, let's find out. Let's find out what that is. It is a movie projector from the early 1900s. So we're looking for a bet on Terry. Looking for a bet on Terry. Bruce bet 10 points, will he win 50? He bet on that Terry. One. All right, we add 50. <laughs> Mary Ann bet 20, will she win 100? On Terry, well done. Jim bet 30. On Paul. Oh, he went for the crimper story. No, no, no. And Janice bet 60 on Paul, you also. So things are turning around here. We Janice is still in the lead, but Terry is, I'm sorry, but Marianne is right on her tail with 150. We'll find out who's going to win when we come back. I have double checked and rechecked our math. We find out that Marianne is now in the lead with 150 points. It's a real tight game. And by the way, the final round is 10 to 1 odds, so anybody can win. That's what I like about it. I also like the fact that it's the art corner. So let's find out what is in the art corner today. Give it a spin, please. All right, it is a painting. And gang, we're not looking for the name of the artist. We're looking for the title of the painting. And John Barber will tell us. Well, indeed, you're all very fortunate to see that. We're all very fortunate to see this. This is the very first time that this has been put on national and international display. <laughs> the Westmoreland family in Hollywood, aside from being the foremost cosmeticians in the motion picture and television industry, is comprised of some brilliant artists. And Percy Westmoreland painted this. It comes from his private collection. It's called uh, Zsa Zsa Without Makeup. <laughs> Zsa Zsa without makeup. Yeah. And you ought to see Ava. All right, uh, Terry. Actually, this, this painting was, was painted by Wanda Ellerbeck, and it is simply called Grandmother. Grandmother. All right, that's simple. That's simple. Grandmother. Paul. Hi, Eric. Hi. Hi. Uh, yes, this is a Wander, uh, Wanda Ellerbeck painting, as you, as you can tell. But you'll notice she's looking down, the feel is down, everything is down. And as we get older, we all begin to feel the same expression she has on her face. It's entitled, Gravity. Gravity? <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you notice if we don't get through this round, I'm going to be looking like that. All right, Rebecca. Do you notice how he stutters when he's lying? <laughs> anyway, Wanda Ellerbeck is the artist but it's entitled Twilight Years. Twilight Years. Yeah, see the twilight? I sure There's do. the years. OK, OK. Place your bets. It is the final round. I'll remind you what our stars have just told us. <laughs> John said it's Zsa Zsa without makeup. Terry said grandmother. Paul said gravity. And Rebecca said the twilight years. Bets are in place. It is anybody's ball game. Bruce, you bet? 40. Marianne? 70. 70. 50. 50. Janice? 50. 50. All right. As I said, let's find out who's going to win this one and find out who's telling the truth. The correct title is Grandmother. Ooh. It's by Wanda Ellerbeck. Grandmother is the title, so I'm looking for a vote on Terry. Bruce, we start with you. If you've got Terry here, you zoom in the lead. You bet on Terry. Right. Yes, indeed. He's in first place. Jim, you were in second place. Hunter, let's see what happens here. You said Terry. All right. Give him 100 points. Janice, what's behind here? Rebecca, I'm sorry. All right, right now, Jim is in the lead. Marianne, if you're correct, that would be 700 points out of your score, you'll win today. If not, you go home in shame and humiliation. Do you say, do you say Terry? You said Rebecca, I'm sorry. Oh. Jim is our winner for today. Congratulations.
Congratulations. All right. Now, now. Jim, you take home 600 points, of course, and what are the other prizes? Shopping. Plus, Ooh. six days accommodations at West Edmonton Mall, one of the world's largest indoor tourist destinations. Features a water park with dolphins, water slides, river rapids, shopping. Plus, six days accommodations at fabulous Fantasyland Hotel, furnished by West Edmonton Mall. Thank you, players. You were terrific. Thank you, stars. You were terrific. And thank you for being here, because we can't have a meeting in the Lions Club without you. See you next time.